On this edition of Test Drive, I'm revitalizing my iRacing career, starting with the Porsche iRacing Cup at Sebring. Let's take a look. So as promised, I'm restarting my iRacing career. Well, not starting from zero, just picking up where I left off about three years ago. Didn't have that many races put into it, uh, but I do have managed to have a C license. Uh, this race was kind of a last minute thing, and my I was practicing, went to do qualifying, and then my internet connection dropped. I had to restart everything, and luckily I still got uh, a lap in for qualifying. So the race has live commentary in it, but at this point, I'm scrambling, I'm trying to turn things on, I forgot to hit record when I was supposed to, and then just realized it. Also, I didn't realize it was a standing start, I thought I had more time. So, I'm a little bit out of sorts to begin with, but hopefully, uh, this is enjoyable. About Billy Strange? No, Darren Turner, you know that British racing car driver? Now, they could be talking about me, but they're not. Green, green, Alright, well I wasn't paying attention to the standing start. I thought we were doing a rolling. I just kind of jumped in here. So what I'm trying to do now is mix live and post commentary. Right. Stay on the left. Little rubbin. Clear. Go left. Oh, the guy goes off. I end up feeling like I concentrate too much and don't say enough, so that's why I'm putting a little post in here. Alright, well, that was exciting. I wasn't even paying attention. I thought we were doing a rolling start. I was like, here we go. So welcome to an impromptu test drive. A little bit of agriculture work. Didn't change anything in the car except for fuel. These guys are throwing me off. They seem to be slowing down before I'm ready to. Let's see where we land here. Wall fight fifth. I don't trust myself taking that wide of a line. Snaky, snaky. Yeah, so 12 laps. Well, well. See how we negotiate the first lap here. Well, at least we got one lap in the books. Definitely, car feels different than practice. In practice, I was running 205s, which I know is still not that quick, but I'm, uh, I struggled in qualifying. See if we can just keep pace. So I've come to the realization that I should just not worry about safety rating. I should just go ahead and drive. It'll take care of itself. Whoa, lock up. They either know something about how the car is handling that I don't, or they are just getting on the brakes way earlier than me. So like I just did back there, obviously don't want to do anything stupid that'll cause a problem, but just go ahead and drive. If I have an off or a, a bump, 
with somebody, just don't worry about it. Obviously, you don't want to take anybody out. But just go ahead and drive. That seemed to make me feel a little more comfortable. Trying to watch these guys' lines, see where they're faster than me, find out where they're slower. And I can't see the shift flights because my wheel's in the way. Oh, the perils of sim racing. We're going to get on the brakes a little early because they like to get on the brakes early. I'm not sure what he was doing, but that was a really wide entry. Two minutes, 5.9, 5.10. Well, I got a 205. I'm sorry, dude. I missed my braking spot. That guy's definitely taking wide lines. Totally my problem. I have to break early again. So when you're following two cars like this, uh, it looks like Darren's a little faster and that the four car is kind of throwing him off. And I don't know if the four car is being defensive, but you really have to watch both because Darren can make a move which can really mess with the four car and that can cause problems so just trying to figure out where they're going what the line they like to take when they're breaking nope don't want to go to second yeah do not go to second there's no need And I just, I, I tend to, the dirt track mentality starts to kick in where I start to just try different lines. Oh, it's, it's scary to go out there. I always feel like the car's not going to turn back. And it does, for whatever reason, when I take that line, it just never feels like the car's going to make it back. And you really have to give the car this sense of trust that it's going to do what you want it to do. I seem to make up time through the final turn here. That was decent. I really like this Porsche. I'm just not... I feel like I'm uncomfortable when I drive it, though. Even though I like the tire, the car doesn't feel all that bad. I just... I tend to feel like I'm struggling more than I should be. I think part of that is due to the track. I think that I'm not very comfortable at Sebring itself. And so that in turn makes me feel like I'm uncomfortable with the car after thinking about it. They're obviously rolling the corners a little better. Yeah, and that's just lack of experience on my part with this track and this car. Definitely feel like I'm gaining under braking, so I'm trying to absorb all this. Trying to think of when I can make a pass, when I should start pushing really hard, because we've got a nice gap. We've got, what, five seconds to the guys behind us, James and Rob. So, just trying to plan out a pass. I'm kind of hoping that Darren will actually kind of move the four car out of the way. Ooh, a little overshoot. Can't pass before you get there. Whoa. That could have been bad car started to step out on me and that's something that's hard to not do try not to pass before you get to the car it, it tends to cause problems deep drifts wide Huh. 
I know I'm getting on the brakes early, I just feel like I'm going to run in the back of them. Which is actually really throwing off my rhythm. And it does, when you feel like you're on top of the other cars and you kind of get this pogo effect going, I'm trying to plan out my pass and like when to catch them and, and having them hit the brakes earlier than I'm used to really changes your rhythm and that's where you know a driver really has to adapt with what what's going on in the environment saw Darren take a look earlier and yeah not really complete the pass you really have to wait till you get to the car he, the hard part in racecraft is knowing well, that's too much. But the hard part with racecraft is, you know, he's, see, he's he's really starting to push. I, I, he can sense that he's faster, and he knows that I keep pogoing back and forth. I'll catch him, and then I'll fall back and catch him again, and that'll really put some uh, unique pressure on Darren. But I mean, to his credit, he's really trying to figure out a way to get by without wrecking the guy. And to the number four car, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that name, but. To the four car, he's definitely holding a very nice line that keeps Darren at bay. But again, learning that racecraft of when not to make a pass and when to make a pass is, is really difficult because you're like, oh, I can get him, I can get him. It gets you excited, you end up missing your line. Uh, you can either run off the track or spin out or, you know, at worst run into the person you're trying to pass. And that's, that's the hard part. You know, making laps is easy. Racing and racing fast is the difficult part. And with this Porsche car, I just prefer this the tire model that's been implemented because I think it makes me focus more on how to race than, dear God, I just, I just want to make a lap without crashing. And that's always kind of the feeling that I've gotten from iRacing previous. I mean, I know people get used to that, Just have to not get over anxious with myself. Tires feel like they've fallen off a little bit. So the car seems to be moving around more. Just don't want to make a huge mistake. Still not in a hurry. Good defensive move. We can just stay right on him. Maybe he'll make a mistake. You know, and he and he did make a mistake, and that was he did a good job of recovering and keeping me behind him. But I, I think he's starting to feel the pressure. And that's been the hardest part about this whole race so far for me is, you know, we're half about halfway through, trying to keep myself reined in. I feel faster, and whenever I have that, you know, I've got a number eight, you know, and then I qualify fifth, and now I'm up to third. I'm always like that, that point of, I'm I'm higher than I should be in this race. So yeah, I get excited, and it's it's hard to keep that under control. That could have been bad. As I said, that's hard to keep it under control. And knowing I'm running 207s when I should be running, you know, 205s. Just making me think of... I need to start finding out where I can pass. Where I'm going to be able to make a move. Alright, halfway through the race... Not, not sure how much faster I am, if any, than these guys, but I just feel like I catch them under braking, and I'm being very conservative. So 
so maybe they'll get excited and take each other out. That's actually me trying to calm myself down. Giving that self-doubt of I'm not sure if I'm faster or not. Track definitely feels slick. Not like it was earlier in practice. It just... car does not seem to be hooking up as much. And it wasn't. The track definitely felt different than practice and even to qualifying. It's, it's a very interesting how just these little tiny things make a big difference in, in how the car handles with the surface uh, and the weather. It, it's... They seem very sensitive to change. But again, like I said, I, I'm trying to keep myself calm. I'm trying to talk myself down from getting overexcited. Because I, I feel like those guys know that I'm lurking. If I'm not being very talkative, I'm concentrating. Ooh, steering got light. Definitely can spin the tire now. Two minutes, six point seven seven eight. You've got five laps to go. Oh! Right side. The next car's the leader. Clear on the right. He did a good job not running into the guy. All right, let's see if we can close the gap. Yeah, now in my, I mean, my heart rate is up at this point because, all right, I've moved into second. And now I'm trying to figure out if I can actually catch first place the four car. And I'm trying to keep all this under wraps. Like, I could potentially get my first win. And those thoughts are like racing through my mind and trying to not make mistakes, keep doing what I was doing, knowing that the pace that I was running should catch me up. I have enough laps, but it's trying to keep all that under control. It, and that's the hard part. But that's the part that I enjoy. I don't enjoy just trying to make a lap. I enjoy the racing part of it. And when I feel like a sim is just punishing enough so where just making a lap is, is hard, I don't enjoy that. But I, I enjoy this part. I enjoy trying to dissect and... I, I like the stalking aspect, aspect of this. I'm kind of gone radio silent here. I'm really trying to... Not only am I trying to catch the four car, I'm trying to make sure that Darren doesn't get a run on me as well and, and make a pass or anything that could potentially slow me down from catching the four car. So all these things are going through your mind. And as I stated earlier, I did not know we were doing a standing start, so I had actually adjusted my fuel for a pace lap and a rolling start. So I've got about an extra lap or so of fuel two, that I really seven, don't need. Five, zero, two. Okay, you're in second. Yes, thank you. I know I'm in second. see Darren behind me so I'm taking a little tighter line where the mirror looks a lot closer in the real one versus the virtual one and it does and it was messing with me I kept checking my relative and seeing like how close is he to being able to make a pass I felt like he was getting ready to take a shot at me there. Meanwhile, I've actually caught up to the four car as well, so now I feel like I'm in a sandwich and I need to start thinking about making a pass, even though now we've gapped a little bit to Darren. Car's not as planted through that turn. Uh, it starts moving around, so now I'm being very careful with the throttle. All right. Does gotta find a place to pass. Yeah, at this point, I'm really trying to dissect where I can make a pass, where I'm faster, where I can get a run. I always feel like I'm a little faster through here, so I'm hoping I can 
at this point in my brain, I'm hoping I can parlay that into a pass, and I definitely caught him through there, so now... Now I'm trying to go for up, you know, trying to take the opportunity. Keep to the right. Clear. Now we just got to keep it. Yeah, and that's the hard part. You get all amped up about trying to catch somebody and then make a pass. See if I can do to him what he did to me. Mess up his breaking points. And that's exactly right. I, I kind of felt like that's what he was doing. Because he might actually be faster than me, but I felt like he was kind of being defensive uh, and using the breaking to try to break the rhythm of the person behind, which is smart. Right side. Clear. Nice pass. Car right. Clear. And if he could have made it stick, it would have been really hard for me to get back by him. So again, being defensive, just trying to use his tactic a little bit until I create enough space where I can feel like I'm comfortable pushing hard. Yeah, and earlier when he said we, you know, earlier when my spotter said I was clear and I made that that pass, and I kind of moved back over. I mean, I wasn't clear by much, but I, I needed to try and break his rhythm going into this turn because it's real easy to take another shot and get a good run going through this corner if you're not uh, careful. Okay, a little bit of breathing room, but just can't relax. Got two laps to go. And at this point, I can definitely start to feel the tires wear. Still not bad, but trying to keep that in mind, try not to overdrive the car too much. Once again, that the difference between the two rear, uh, the two mirrors really kind of messes you up. I keep having to watch the relative and really see how close he is. so hard not to lock up the tires. It's so easy to do with this car, but manageable. You got about five laps of fuel left. A little overshoot, a little too much throttle. It makes your heart rate go up just a little bit. Really, I'm just trying to save the entry into the corner and not make a mistake and overshoot or cause the car to snap loose, spin out, anything like that. I can handle coming off the corner. It's the entry that I want to make sure I nail and don't, you know, lose the car. That's what's going through my, my head right now. Even if I go a little slower, I know that if need be, I can pick the pace back up if he gets right on my bumper again. Because we've stretched it out to about two seconds. Oh boy, one more lap to my very first iRacing win if I can hold on to it. Two minutes, six, point four, three, one more lap to win. Let's 
try not to do anything stupid. And that's the hard part, is trying not to get, lose focus, get too excited, just hit your marks. You know, it happens in the real car when I, when I would run. Uh, when I got my first, uh, my first cart win on the big road course, I took the lead halfway through the race. And really, the rest of the race was spent thinking about don't make any silly mistakes. Focus. Keep running the pace that you're running. I don't care if he's catching me. I'm just trying not to throw it away. Yeah, because when you when you slow down too much, uh, it it actually breaks your rhythm. Just trying to find that right balance of being methodical about my lap and still pulling off a win. One more turn. Oh, what's this guy doing? Hopefully we don't catch him. And of course, to me, I'm thinking this is the easiest turn to make a mistake in if, if you overdrive it. And I definitely didn't want the four car getting some sort of big run. Well, holy sh**, would you look at that? I actually want to race in iRacing, for crying out loud. Well. That was something else. Hey, you got to see me get my very first win in iRacing, so... <laughs> uh, that was a good race. That was fun. Definitely a nice combo for the Porsche at Sebring. Still got to work on my speed a little more, but for that that one, that was, that was real good. So for all the latest in sim racing news, you can hit up ISRTV.com. I'm Billy Strange. You can follow me at Strange underscore Billy. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, really, hanging out with me as I get my first win, so take care and I'll catch you in the next test drive.